So hello, I'm Devajyoti from IIT Kanpur, India. So today I will talk about partial tidal disruption of spinning eccentric white drops by spinning intermediate mass black holes. So uh, this is the brief outline of my talk. So first of all, I will uh, I would like to introduce the tidal disruption events a bit, and then I will discuss about the methodology to uh, methodology to simulate the tidal disruption events. Next, I will move on to the tidal interactions between the white dwarfs and the intermediate mass black hole system and incorporating the spins for both the white dwarfs and the intermediate mass black holes. And finally, I showcase the uh, results and I'll conclude with the summary and the future direction. So as Megha introduced already, so tidal disruption event, as we know that it is an astrophysical phenomenon when a star comes closer to the black hole orbit, it is disrupted due to the tidal field of the black hole. And this event is typically known as tidal disruption event. Uh, these tidal disruption events are generally categorized into two uh, ways. One is full disruption, another is the partial disruption based on the uh, impact parameter beta. But however, the limit between the full disruption and the partial disruption depends on the various factors like uh, rotation and the uh, exact hydrodynamics, uh, stellar hydrodynamics as well. So for both the full and the partial tidal disruption, once a spherical star is approaching towards the black hole, it is interacted with the black hole and form two kinds of debris. One is bound debris, another is the unbound debris. And uh, in case of partial tidal disruption, another interesting situation occurs because of the presence of the core and that core can uh, significantly alter the dynamics of the material that will going to fall onto the black hole. Now the complex picture of the TDs can be uh, understood once we uh, do some numerical simulations, and one way to uh, simulate the tidal disruption event is to use the smooth particle hydrodynamics algorithm, which is a Lagrangian based approach. And we use our uh, own developed speech code to simulate tidal disruption event. Uh, and so we generally use 0 0.5 million uh, particles to simulate the star. Next, I uh, moved into the white drop IMB system. So white drops, as we know, that uh, these are the final stage of the uh, stellar evolution of lower to intermediate mass systems uh, of masses ranging from 0 0.81 to 8 solar mass. And these white dwarfs are extensively studied in the literature because of their uh, well-known uh, well equation of state. The degenerate pressure due to the electron balances the self-gravity. Now, once we fix the white dwarf to be our interacting star, uh, uh, that automatically fixes the upper limit of the black hole mass, uh, which is uh, which falls within the uh, range of intermediate mass black hole system. So intermediate mass black hole system, as we uh, know, these are the missing links with mass range of 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 5 solar mass are, uh, are uh, very rarely uh, detectable. And uh, but however, I mean, in the recent observation of 2023 by uh, by Kao et al. Uh, reported one tidal disruption event uh, due to a black hole with mass 10 to the power 5 solar mass and uh, dimensionless spin parameter A star is greater than 0 0.97. And this basically shows some interesting physics can occur uh, when we study, uh, I mean, care uh, IMB black hole systems. And on the other hand, the theoretical and the observational aspects of the spinning white drops have been studied for many decades. In 2022, uh, by Pelisoli uh, at all, uh, discovered a uh, white dwarf in the cataclysmic variable binary system with spin period of 24.9 seconds. Uh, on the other hand, in 2021, one isolated white dwarf with mass 1.2 solar mass and spin period of 70 seconds is reported by uh, Kelly at all. Now, this basically motivates us to uh, study the tidal disruption event incorporating the spinning white dwarfs in the background of the spinning IMBHS. So now first, in order to incorporate the rotating black hole within the SPH framework, we use some hybrid model. So we, uh, we use the relativistic uh, accelerations along with the, uh, along with the uh, stellar hydro, uh, Newtonian stellar hydrodynamics and the self-gravity. However, this is an approximation, but this approximation uh, is well fit for the choice of our simulation parameter. So the care metric, which represents the geometry of the spinning black hole, out, uh, geometry outside the spinning black hole, in the real coordinate is expressed uh, by, this, uh, by this, and here A is the uh, care parameter, where J and A uh, being the angular momentum and the mass of the black hole, and A star is the 
uh, and a star is the dimensionless spin parameter. Uh, now, once we have the metric in the VL coordinate, we need to convert it back to the XYZ, uh, to the Cartesian-like coordinate XYZ and T. And finally, using the geodesic equation in the global expressed in the global coordinate, that uh, basically act as a act as an external acceleration for our system. Now, in order to check uh, whether the implementation is correct or not, we choose some 10 to the power 6 solar mass black hole and one solar mass polytropic star. And its RP is chosen in, in such a way that uh, it is 10 times larger than uh, 10 times the tidal radius. Then we studied the uh, rigid body uh, motion in presence of the Kerr black hole for various spin parameter as mentioned in the ledger and compare them with the test particle geodesics. And here we can uh, see that uh, these two matches very well. And that shows that uh, our implementation of the care metric within the speech framework is fine. Next, we construct the rotating white dwarfs. So in order to do that, first we create the relaxed uh, configuration and uh, uh, from the stretch map position. Uh, after that, uh, we incorporated some rigid rotation within the stellar object and evolve the system to achieve the equilibrium quickly and uh, reduce the velocity perturbation. Uh, uh, we, we, need to, uh, we need to go into the co-moving reference frame and reset the velocities to be zero for a few number of times. Once, uh, uh, once our angular, angular velocity converges to the desired angular velocity, then st we stop doing these resettings and freely evolve the system so that uh, so that it can able to sustain the rotating configuration or not. And finally, uh, the maximum, uh, finally, once all the properties such that the, uh, all the properties such that the central density, the gravitational energy or the internal energy when falls within uh, some tolerance level, we stop that evolution and obtain the relaxed uh, rotating configurations the maximum rotation that the stellar object can sustain is obtained by uh, balancing the self gravity with, along with the uh, along with the centrifugal force which results the breakup angular velocity to be omega breakup is root under uh, gm over of r cube and uh, one if a stellar object rotates uh, with some angular velocity of omega star then the breakup fraction is defined as the ratio of the omega star divided by the omega breakup and I have presented one such scenario to create a, a rotating uh, a rotating white dwarf. So in the left hand panel, I have shown the relaxed configuration where the theoretical and the speech density profiles are overlap to each other. Then I impose some uh, rotational, uh, then I impose some rigid rotation with lambda value to be 0 0.15. And after few resettings, and once the properties got converged for a, a sufficient amount of time, this is the uh, this is the central density variation uh, along with the with the time and finally uh, for the check at the end we compare the azimuthal velocities of the particles as a distance of the uh, as a radial distance from the rotational axis is plotted uh, here and it is compared with the v equals to omega r and we can see that uh, this follows uh, uh, well and therefore we able to generate the rotating white dwarfs so as we uh, generated so as we generated the uh, rotating uh, white dwarf configurations and the uh, rotating black holes next job is to isolate isolate the effects of the coupled rotation in order to have some manageable parameter space we first fix the orbit and the rp is basically 39 rc rc is the gravitational radius gm by c square and the eccentricity of the orbit to be 0 0.9 that fixes our uh, epicenter distance of the orbit. Then we fix the black hole mass to be 10 to the power 4 solar mass and the white dwarf mass to be 0 0.3 solar mass. And then vary the different uh, spin parameter, A star and lambda values uh, to uh, have the TDs, uh, have the TDs with uh, rotating black holes and the rotating white dwarfs. But in order to understand fully the coupled rotation effects, it is good idea to uh, first understand uh, the individual rotations effect and there are three possibilities here. One is the TDs with rotating pH and non-rotating white dwarf. Then the TDs with non-rotating pH and rotating white dwarf. And finally, TDs with rotating pH and rotating white dwarf. So 
this is the simulations result for TDs with pair black hole and non-rotating white dwarfs. In the right hand panel, I have plotted the core mass fraction, uh, which is normal uh, core mass fraction along with the normalized time. And we can see that uh, for the retrograde rotation of the uh, black hole, more amount of mass is disrupted. And you observed almost 14% uh, relative uh, increase in the core mass fraction when A star changes from minus 0 0.98 to plus 0 0.98. And one of the possible reasons uh, for this uh, is, is due to the after interaction, the white dwarf, uh, white dwarf in the retrograde orbit is, uh, is spent much more time in the likelihood of the black hole. As we can see via the blue line, and uh, therefore more amount of mass is disrupted from the initial white dwarf, and that is reflected in the core mass uh, fraction plot. When uh, if we if we can see the if we can see the uh, bound tail mass fraction variation with the normalized time, we get the same behavior and found almost 17 percent uh, decrease in the bound tail mass fraction when A star changes from minus 0 0.98 to plus 0 0.98. Now, as you can see that uh, for uh, following the blue line, which is the retrograde motion of the uh, black hole. So more amount of mass is present in the bound tail and therefore the in the fallback rate plot, which is obtained uh, by tracking the rate at which mass is falling onto the black hole. So uh, by, by calculating this fallback rate, we can see that blue lines is expanded more here. And because more amount of mass is disrupted for the blue lines in compared to the a red line. Uh, however, the peak value of the uh, peak value of the m dot and the uh, time at which the uh, peak occurs, those are very much uh, uh, not sensitive to the different A star values. Next, we consider the simulation of TDs with non-rotating black holes and rotating white dwarfs. So, for that, we first construct the white dwarfs with different lambda values, uh, as we can see from the uh, legend. And uh, one, uh, as we know, when a star passes uh, the black hole due to the tidal torque, uh, there will be some rotation in the orbital angular moment, uh, in the orbital uh, motion direction. Therefore, the initial, uh, therefore the initial angular uh, moment is initial spin angular momentum of the white dwarf can heavily influence this situation. So, for the prograde rotation, where the spin angular momentum of the initial white dwarf is uh, along the direction of the orbital angular momentum. After the disruption, it is uh, uh, in that in that configuration more amount of mass is uh, disrupted and the debris is spreaded much more in the orbital plane, which is evident from this uh, plot, uh, and also as well as from the core mass fraction plot for the red line, more amount of mass is disrupted. However, for the uh, retrograde case where the spin angular momentum, initial spin angular momentum is antiparallel to the orbital angular momentum. It somehow resists uh, the uh, it somehow resists the tidal uh, tidal uh, rota tidal uh, torque and less amount of mass is disrupted, which is evident from the blue line. And we found almost 16% relative increase in the core mass fraction when lambda changes from 0 0.15 to minus 0 0.15. Next, I've considered the uh, I've shown the uh, the bound tail mass fraction variation with the normalized time. Here again, we can see for the prograde rotation of the white drop, more amount of mass is present in the bound tail, and which is also reflected in the fallback rate plot. However, one noticeable change is that the uh, for the prograde rotation of the white drop, the return time of the most bound debris is way ahead than the blue curve, which is the retrograde rotation. And uh, uh, almost we found 18% relative decrease in the bound tail mass fraction when lambda changes from 0 0.15 to minus 0 0.15. Next, I have considered the simulation of TDs with uh, fair black holes and rotating white dwarfs. So, as I mentioned earlier, that for the retrograde rotation of the black hole, which result more amount of mass disruption, and uh, for the uh, for the for the white dwarf case, the initial prograde rotation of the white dwarf result more amount of mass disruption. Therefore, this combination, which is represented by the blue line which is represented by the blue line, uh, shows the maximum amount of mass disruption in comparison to the red line, which corresponds to the combination uh, of uh, A star 0 0.98 and lambda minus 0 0.15. That means the 
retrograde uh, that means the prograde rotation of the uh, black hole and the retrograde rotation of the retrograde rotation of the white dwarf next uh, the same thing is evident in the bound tail mass fraction plot for the uh, and we obtained almost 35% relative increase in the core mass fraction and 39% relative decrease in the bound tail mass fraction when the combination changes from a star equals to minus 0 0.98 and lambda 0 0.15 to a star equals to 0 0.98 and lambda equals to minus 0 0.15. Then I have considered the uh, uh, TD observables. One of the uh, TD observable which is the fallback rate, the blue curve which uh, basically corresponds to the maximum amount of mass destruction. For in that plot, we can see that blue curve is ex uh, extended much more than the uh, red one, which corresponds to the minimum amount of mass disruption. And uh, due to the coupled rotation effect as well, the initial uh, the uh, initial the return time of the most bound debris also influenced. However, in the GW sector. I have not shown here the for different rotating white dwarfs and uh, non-rotating black hole PD interactions will lead to the indistinguishable uh, GW amplitude plots. Therefore, uh, only uh, only differences coming from the black hole spin, which uh, shows uh, faintly here, and this results basically agrees well with the uh, Toscani 2019 uh, GW paper for different combinations. And at last, I want to highlight one possible uh, one possible uh, observational uh, signature, which is the kick velocity related to the jump in specific orbital energy after the partial tidal disruption. And that shows that uh, that coupled rotation effects are significant there, and almost 30% change we observed when we considered the coupled rotations. And with this, I want to uh, summarize. So we uh, aim to understand the effect of the uh, coupled rotation of BH uh, and uh, WD on the TD observable. Secondly, uh, we found substantial uh, rotational, uh, substantial combined rotation effect on the core mass, on the bound tail mass, as well as the mass asymmetry of two tidal tails. And I believe uh, more extensive study is required to uh, to get the uh, to get the actual to discover the dependence of the uh, combined spin effects on the peak fallback rate as well as the, as on the GW amplitude in the near uh, relativistic region using GRSPH technique. Yes, with this, uh, thank you. Questions. Um, I wanted to ask an initial question about the kick yes. velocities. I think it's okay. um, super interesting as an observational signature. Um, right. I know people have looked at this in the context of trying to find um, cases where you have this double degenerate um, 1A scenario, is this something that you might be able to find in, say, Gaia velocities of 1As, or is it kind of slow enough that it's going to be mixed in with those? Um, have you have you thought about how you might find things like this? Uh, uh, I mean, sorry, I mean, you wanted to ask uh, how we calculated the kick velocity. No, I mean, uh, looking at sort of the, the population of, of white dwarfs that we might have measured velocities for, say, from Gaia or something like that, um, is this something that we would be able to pick out a handful of maybe higher velocity than normal or white dwarfs kind of with weird velocities compared to the Milky Way? Um, or is this something that will be really tricky to find? Okay, so uh, for the white dwarfs, we get the range that it almost reaches to three, uh, 100, uh, 1,350 uh, kilometer per second. And uh, uh, for for main sequence star, I actually forgot the number, but yes, I think it is possible for, I mean, the wide drop when interact with the uh, IMBHS due to the, uh, I mean, mass asymmetry in the two tidal tails that can uh, kick the core. I mean, uh, this magnitude uh, basically can be influenced by the, by the, by the probably lower mass black holes as well. I mean, if we consider some 10 to the power 3 solar mass black holes, there will be a lot of uh, asymmetry in the two tidal tails, and that can result even enhance kick velocity. That uh, I think uh, yeah, maybe, I mean, it is possible. Thanks. And then um, just to, to sort of follow up, is there anything else that would be different if we found kind of stars with these kind of velocities that would distinguish these kicks from kicks from other sources, from white dwarfs and binaries? 
Uh, okay, so that at that moment currently I don't know. So I'll need to figure it out. I mean, how to distinguish it? Yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. I had a question uh, which had like a broader implication. So uh, yesterday we heard that these kind of white dwarf uh, tidal disruptions can have can lead to like one A the thermonuclear disruptions as well. Do you? Right. No, if any of your simulations could uh, have those, uh, if, if yes, how would you model them using your SPH code? Uh, currently, I didn't use the nuclear uh, reaction within the white dwarf, but uh, I think in 2019, uh, 2009 uh, paper of uh, Rosho, there they actually considered the nuclear reactions nu uh, and uh, probably uh, maybe I don't know. I need to check the 2019 Rosho paper. Maybe uh, we can we, we can uh, get something out of, out of this out out from that paper. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, hello. Um, yeah. So I mentioned that um, there are black hole spin measurements up to a greater than 0 0.9798. 0 0.9798. But I think that's for X-ray binaries, so which are not actually 10 to the four star mass intermediate mass black holes, right? Uh, um. So my, my question is more like, have you tried other, because the scenario you are simulating, they apply to maximally rotating black hole, which is like A equals one, or non-rotating black hole, which is zero. Have you tried any intermediate values? Because these are really like two extreme cases. So I'm interested to see that. Uh, okay, so I have actually tried with the uh, lesser value of the dimensionless spin parameter. And uh, we obtained the similar behavior. I mean, in the uh, result that I have presented. I mean, here actually, if we can take the A star to be 0 0.5, and then that red line basically shifted, and it is more towards the black line. Uh, and we actually choose this high, uh, higher values of the A star just to get the maximal effects. So the behavior uh, uh, remains the same, although the magnitude wise, it will be less. I mean, the, whether the core mass fraction change or the bound tail mass fraction change. Uh, so is that, does that mean that the maximum effect is only going to happen when your black hole is like nearly maximally rotating. Uh, yes, uh, maybe, maybe like yes. Most parameter space of the black hole spin is going to be close to the Schwarzschild case, like, like that. Right, 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 yeah, may, may, yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask, so you're assuming the evolution of the white dwarf in the fixed curve background metric, so for this mass ratio, of a white dwarf with an intermediate mass black hole, how reliable is it to ignore the feedback of the white dwarf's motion in the curve metric, like to assume it's a point particle motion, I guess. And also related, uh, are you going to maintain your uh, SPH code somewhere online or is it like? Uh, still, private? it is under the development phase. And uh, I mean, I'm currently implementing the GRSPH within the code. So uh, it is not currently available in online. I need to talk to my PI regarding that. And as you asked me, so for the scenario I have considered, uh, here the mass ratio is almost uh, uh, 3,000, around 3,000. So yeah, yes, so I mean the back, back reactions will be uh, there. Uh, but in SPH, currently, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know how to deal with these back reactions. So probably uh, the, uh, the situations currently, I mean, the currently un underdeveloped code uh, where they actually use the SPH in curve space time, the BSSN formalism with, uh, I mean, the GRSPH technique. So probably that could handle this back reaction. Uh, but current in current methodology, I think uh, I don't know how to deal with the back reactions. Do you have an estimate on how much ignoring the back reaction affects your results? Or like would affect the result for a slightly lower mass black hole? Um, we actually calculated the local radius of curvature and that seems to be very large, uh, which basically signifies that uh, uh, signifies that the stellar self gravity, uh, I mean the uh, 
द रेडियस अलग द विद इन द रेडियस द वेरिएशन आर बेसिकली वेरी लेस आई मीन द वेरिएशन आर वेरी लेस हाउ एवर आई डोंट हैव करेंटली द एस्टिमेशन आई नीड टू लुक इन टू दैट I need to look into that. I mean, the local radius of curvature is basically something related to the, I mean, using the stellar, I mean, Newtonian hydrodynamics or the uh, still, I mean, Newtonian self gravity. So that is something not related to your question. Yeah, I'm sorry. So basically, I didn't uh, have any ex estimation right now. Uh, the question that you asked. Yeah. So I have a <clears throat> slightly related question, which I think you may have somewhat answered in response to that previous question. But have you looked to see if there are any coordinate dependent effects that come into these simulations? <coughs> so like uh, I, I mean, you are saying if we can use some case child uh, metric yeah. and if the results are consistent or not. Correct. Uh, yeah, so uh, actually in 2000, 17 uh, Rashok paper, they have shown that uh, this case child and the VL coordinate, those are, uh, those results almost identical results, but for this current work, I didn't check it with the case child, but yes, definitely, uh, as you pointed out, uh, I'll definitely check that thing in my, uh, I mean, for my results as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, let's thank Jagrodi again.